Hello y'all, it's Ninja DC, and now I'm making my first response video in, well, a while, to, well, KP's analyst of the whole dyslexia situation in the flowers. And I'm just going to offer my thoughts on the issue, and along with some channel updates. Like, for instance, I moved. Um, which has sort of been responsible for some of my delays. On top of that, yes. Season 3 video is well underway. However, on to the subject at hand. Or, huh. <sighs> Whatever. First off, I must agree with the first part of KP's video. Specifically, her thoughts on the disconnect between writers and animators. The animators are given a lot of leeway in terms of background details in the show. They are directly responsible for a lot of background references, so this works out pretty great most of the time. Here, they likely misunderstood Megan's thoughts and played it up slightly. These things sort of happen. Heck, the internet is still aflame over a certain Jamie and Cersei editing error that gravely misread the writer and director's ideas. But, onto the subject at hand. This last year is a very popular fanfiction and headcanon ship, which is understandable. In the gap after Keep Calm Flutteron's announcement and actual release, I searched up some fanfiction that explores their interaction. One of such was Broken Spirit. Minor spoilers ahead, but that fanfiction does ship Discord and Celestia, and it works within that narrative. But that's the key, that narrative. Broken Spirit, amongst other fan works, reimagines characters, particularly in terms of background stories. In those universes where, say, Discord and Celestia were foehold friends, the Celestia actually can work. However, like the proliferation of homosexual ships within the fandom, fan narrative and series narrative don't always overlap, to say the least. But opposites attract the Celestia shippers scream out loud. Well, yes and no. It is true opposites attract, but only when they complement each other. Let me give it a good example. Taiga and Ruji from Torador. Taiga is a cute, violent, klutzy spitfire known for a burst of rage with a secret soft side. Ryuji, in contrast, is known for his gangster look, but is best described as a perfect Japanese housewife. For the love of God and all his holy, please let me clean up that horrible mess of a kitchen! I really wish there was a better way to describe them. These two are opposites, but they complement each other by fulfilling emotional voids. Ryuji's patience allows him to provide Taiga with the emotional support she can't admit she needs, amongst maintaining basic hygiene. While in contrast, Taiga's fiery personality lights a fire under Ryuji's otherwise docile personality. They are opposites, but they fulfill each other in a yin-yang sort of way. In contrast, Celestia and Discord really don't in their present states, as Celestia represents lawful good and Discord chaotic good. Their lifestyles contrast and are likely not going to shift from their current states, as they are sort of complete in them. Celestia has been comfortably ruling for over a thousand years in an orderly manner. And Discord is, well, chaos personified. Celestia does not need to be a little bit more chaotic, as made prevalent by the aforementioned 1000 years of great rule. Discord would not be Discord if he made sense. His one flaw that needed to be fixed, you know, the whole being evil and all, was already fixed by Flutters. So currently, these two do not add anything to each other, but instead they detract quite heavily. Besides that, the series canon throws several wrenches into the ship's engines. One was a torpedoing of the Fullhood Friends headcan that died at the beginning of Season 4, with a clear establishment that they only ever knew each other as foes. In the comics, Celestia also meets both a good Discord and a good Sombra in an alternate universe, to which she shows absolutely no interest in hero Discord, while also falling head over heels over Edelus Sombra. And then there was that very clear statement by Megan that kicked off KP's late response, and my response to that response. I'm sorry for how we uh, behaved in that season finale, so I think he's just being, it's more a display of apology than anything. Usually the writers leave it up to the fans to interpret such events, but Megan clearly shot this one down. Time to be blunt once more. There has been absolutely no hints to romance between Celestia and Discord, besides a sarcastic remark, I miss you, and a now squashed flower scene. The two don't fulfill any emotional needs for the other, and potentially create more problems. The relationship is founded on hate and turned into awkward neutrality. The idea they make a great ship simply because they are both seemingly immortal opposites is nearly as illogical as shipping God and Satan. Sadly, because of the internet, I know that ship also exists. <sighs> so no, KP, Megan did not ruin what was obvious. If you wish to ship Celestia and Discord in fanfiction and headcanons, fine. They can work in those universes. 
worked well in Broken Spirit from where it left off before all the spin-offs. However, within the show's canon, there is no precedence unlike other ships. Like... Chile and Big Mac. She so wants him. Well, this is the Ninja DC. Keep calm and an open mind.